This is Dr. Wood with Citadel Civil Engineering. This is Civil 203 Dynamics, and in this lecture, we're gonna talk about learning objective 2.3.1.1 that talks about relative rectilinear motion, so relative motion in one dimension. All right, when we think about relative motion, relative motion, we're gonna be looking at the motion between two points. And it turns out you already know some of this from statics. Um, now, when we think about this, we're in chapter 11. This is chapter 11.2c in your textbook. And so you can check that out and read along as we go. Again, we're still doing particle kinematics. Um, the example I like to use from this use is from this movie, Bullet. Now it's an older movie. Uh, it's, it's well known as the first modern car chase. And in fact, if you're tempted to watch this movie, don't just go YouTube the car chase. It's really all that's worthwhile. Most of the movie is Steve McQueen going into restaurants asking to use the phone. Um, that said, the car chase is epic and awesome. And Steve McQueen is in this green Ford Mustang the whole time, 1968 Ford Mustang. And the bad guys, two hitmen, are in this black 1968 Dodge charger. And so throughout the movie, Steve is chasing the bad guys in the vehicle, like so. And so I want us to look at their two different perspectives. So up here on the top left, we have Steve McQueen in his Ford Mustang, but he's looking at the Dodge Charger. So this is the back of Steve's head. There's that jawline. And then there's the Dodge Charger. On the other hand, we have uh, the, the bad guys looking in their rearview mirror at the Ford Mustang. And so this is the notation that we're gonna be using in this class, is we're gonna talk about the object we're looking at first relative to where we're, we're standing, what our current perspective is. So hence, Dodge Charger with respect to the Ford Mustang. So we're looking at the Charger while sitting in the Mustang, or the Ford Mustang with respect to the Dodge Charger. So that's the sort of thing we're looking at. Now, we wanna put this into perspective, and so we're gonna start with the origin. Okay, there's our origin. And then out here, I'm gonna have my Ford Mustang. And a little bit farther up, I'm gonna have my Dodge Charger. Remember, they're actually driving all over San Francisco, so lots of 3D curvilinear motion. But right now we're doing rectilinear motion, so we're just gonna use a number line to represent these things. And if we were to think of them in terms of from the origin, we would have how far they've driven. So here would be our position of the Ford Mustang. And this would be the position of the Dodge Charger. So hopefully everyone is tracking so far. Now when we think about relative position, we're gonna end up with a position vector. So relative position. Or the position vector that we learned about in statics going to look like this. We're going to use this sort of notation. We're going to say the position of the Dodge Charger with respect to the Ford Mustang. Now I'm going to adjust the screen size a little bit so I'll help you all see it a little better, I hope. Okay, but keep in mind what we're thinking about, right? So the position, the way we read this is this is the position of the Dodge Charger with respect to the Ford Mustang. And when we look at this, we'd ask ourselves, okay, what does that look like as a line up here on my number line? Well, the Dodge Charger is what I'm interested in, so that's where my arrowhead's gonna go, and the Ford Mustang is where I start. So it'd be something like this. So this is gonna be the position of the Dodge Charger with respect to the Ford Mustang. And so when I do that, if I wanted to find this vector, what I would do is I would take the position of the Dodge Charger and subtract from it the position of the Ford Mustang. So we're going to take the Dodge Charger, that's our object of interest, and subtract from it where we're sitting, our new origin, the Ford Mustang. So this is representing the upper left chart, upper left pic picture, Steve McQueen looking at the Dodge Charger. Now, what would we do? Oh, and, I, and the reason I like this notation is because it puts it in the right order. If I just break up these notations, put the negative sign, I'm going to get the right equation. Now, if I wanted the, the lower right picture, the hitman looking at the Ford Mustang, that would be this position. So the Ford Mustang would be the point of interest, and it's going to start from the Dodge Charger. And our notation would be 
position of the Ford Mustang with respect to the Dodge Charger. So we're going to flip it like so. And all that means is that our equation gets flipped like so. So hopefully everything's making sense so far. We've got a nice little little thought experiment here. Now, if we think about the objective throughout the, the car chase, Steve McQueen's goal is to be in the same place as the Dodge Charger. Now, hopefully not exactly the same place. That would be a car crash, but he wants to be on top of him, right? And so he's always aiming to make this relationship as close to zero as possible, right? But what the Dodge Charger is aiming to do is he wants to get away. He wants to put the Ford Mustang way in his rearview mirror. So he's looking to make this value as negative as possible. So you can see where the signs matter. Uh, but we just have to like think through, make sure we have that mental model engaged, right? Before we try and use math to describe it. But that's, that's an important thing we'll want to do. So that's relative position. Now, the next thing we would want to talk about Oh, one other thing to mention here is that this requires a common origin. We can see we've got our common origin over here. Okay, the next term, if we go from position, we would look at relative velocity. And it turns out, remember, if we take position and we want to go to velocity, we just take the derivative with respect to time. And so we could do that to both sides of this equation. And what we would end up with is that we could talk about the velocity of the Dodge Charger with respect to the Ford Mustang equal to the velocity of the Dodge Charger minus the velocity of the Ford Mustang. So let's draw that up here on our kinematic property diagram. We'd have the velocity of the Dodge Charger and let's say Steve's going faster. So the velocity of the Ford Mustang. So if we put in this math, we got a little value and then a bigger value we're going to see that this value is going to be negative. So again, this is the top right screen where we're seeing from Steve's perspective. And what he's looking to do is he's looking to reel them in, right? So he wants their relative velocity to actually be negative by making his velocity faster than their velocity. And likewise for them, they, Ford Mustang with respect to the Dodge Charger, the velocity of the Mustang first, minus the velocity of the charger. So they're looking to get away, right? So they want their velocity to be greater than his velocity. Yeah, which would also mean they're looking for a negative relative velocity as well. They want him to be moving backwards relative to where they are. And so they're both aiming for a negative relative velocity, but it all depends on your perspective. Right, so they're, they're, it's a car chase, they've got competing interests, but both would be aiming to generate a negative relative velocity. And in truth, throughout the majority of the car race, they maintain a relative velocity of zero because the distance stays the same between them. They're going about the same speed for the whole car chase. And so if both of these values are the same, then we get zero relative velocity. All right, so, if we got relative velocity, we can also have relative acceleration. Now, admittedly, this is where my example falls apart because we don't really experience the acceleration throughout the car chase. And in fact, uh, most of the time they're accelerating at the sp same speed or decelerating at the same speed. Um, and so your relative acceleration typically is gonna be around zero for watching a car chase like this. Um, but it's going to be the same notation. We would take the derivative with respect to time of both of these. So we'd have the acceleration of the Dodge Charger with respect to the Ford Mustang by taking the acceleration of the Dodge Charger minus the acceleration of the Ford Mustang. We could also talk about the acceleration of the Ford Mustang with respect to the Dodge Charger is the acceleration of the Ford Mustang minus the acceleration of the Dodge Charger. So this is kind of the, the notation. I think it's Hopefully this example has been helpful to you as we think these things through. And so we got our kinematic property diagram over here, our KPD. Hopefully we remember that acronym. And we talked about relative position, relative velocity, and relative acceleration. So when we're working with problems with two points, 
our procedure for tackling these types of problems is typically going to be, well, first, to draw a kinematic property diagram. And then we'll want to write our kinematic relationship equations, uh, KR equations, for each particle. So in this case, we do our best to quantify the position, velocity, and acceleration of the Ford Mustang in the position, velocity, and acceleration of the Dodge Charger. From there, we could write our relative motion kinematic relationship equations, which is exactly what we see here on the board. And that's going to give us enough unknowns or enough equations to hopefully solve for all of our intended unknowns. And so kinematic property diagram, we want to build that mental model and sketch it out from the problem statement, our reality. And then we'll build our kinematic relationship equations for each particle and our relative motion equations for the relationship between the particles. And then hopefully we'd be able to solve for unknown. So often we won't know all of the kinematic relationships for one of the particles. We'll be looking for that relationship between them. The final thing I want to point out is that the other way that we could think about this is we could think about finding the absolute value or the, the uh, velocity, acceleration, or position for one point as taking the relative velocity and adding to it the velocity or position or acceleration of the initial point. So we could just kind of rearrange this equation. And that's a precursor to what we'll do when we start talking about rigid body motion. So here's our notes relative motion. Hopefully that will help you. I look forward to seeing you in class and working a problem with you.